Hi, welcome to Joe's Technology. I'm Joe, and today I'm going over the installation procedures for Linux Mint 15 using the KDE desktop, and this is the 64-bit edition that you're seeing now. If you're not sure, uh, this is how 32- uh, and 64-bit uh, works. If you have 4 gigs of RAM and below, you want the 32-bit version. If you have more than 4 gigs of RAM, you want the 64-bit edition. That way uh, you're able to address all of your memory. So here we are. This is the KDD environment. As you can see, it loaded very, very quickly. Right out of the bat, we already have all the uh, default applications that uh, Mint typically comes with. You know, internet browsers so that we can uh, um, be able to immediately get it online if we wanted to. And let's see. Ah, there we go. And our built-in office packages. So right away, if you just wanted a desktop that you could be able to get online, check your email, you know, visit Facebook, watch YouTube, watch, you know, television on Hulu or any of the other online television services, you'd be able to do it with this desktop. And as you can see, it boots very, very quickly. And this is just off of a USB stick. All right, installation is, is just as simple. We just click the icon, and Linux Mint is uh, ready to fire up and get going for us. I'll go ahead and leave the default Engli uh, language to English since I'm here in the United States. It needs uh, 7.9 gigabytes of hard drive space. So that should be no problem. And I'll go ahead and leave the default, which is a guided installation, and let it choose all the defaults that it wants to to set everything up. Since this hard drive is empty, uh, I have no problems just turning it all over to Mint. Here we uh, choose our time zone. You just chose whatever one's appropriate for you. And, of course, uh, English, uh, United States is the default for me, since that's where I'm at. So I'll just go ahead and choose Continue. Here we're being prompted for a default name. This is important. This will be your default administrator account that will actually control the computer and be able to make changes. So choose something that you don't plan to use for day-to-day -day use. You'll want to have another account to act as just a regular user. This account will be just when you're installing software or... Uh, some other administrative function like adding new users or making changes to the system. Um, for, for me, I'll, I'll just put Joe since I'm just doing this for testing purposes. It's important to choose a good password, something that you'll remember. I'll leave the default, which is to require my password on login. That way uh, we don't have any problems with uh, people being able to sit down at the computer and make changes to it uh, that come as a surprise to us later. You know, children, for example. <laughs> and now it's going to take a moment here to start installing Mint. One of the really nice things about Linux Mint is that, uh, well, and Linux in general, is the amount of free software that's available uh, to us. There are software repositories that have just about anything you can think of. Now, there are commercial uh, software packages. I mean, you can buy them. Some people are under the uh, mistaken impression that if it's free, it must be garbage. Well, um, I don't know. I, I look at LibreOffice uh, in particular, and it's probably the best Office package that's out there. Uh, and, and it doesn't cost anything. And the reason why it's best uh, for me is because it does all the things that I'm looking for. I'm, you know, if I'm doing word processing, I want to be able to use a few different fonts, include some graphics, you know, format things into tables and columns, you know, so I could make like, you know, little newsletters and, and other information, be able to spell check them. Uh, sometimes uh, Office Suite manufacturers will add so many crazy features that, it, by and large, most users only touch a fraction of that. They use the basic things, and the rest of the stuff is just fluff. It's an excuse to keep the prices high by saying, look at this new innovation we just created, you know. Um, not to pick on Apple, but, you know, when Steve Jobs was around, he used to do that all the time, where he would say, and the new Macintosh OS comes with 2,000 new features, and then when you dug down into it, 1,900 of those new features were fonts. Uh, <laughs> it's all marketing spin, um, but it, it's hard to spin uh, that uh, free is good, or, or not good, uh, although they do try. You'll, you'll hear all kinds of things. Oh, that free software, you can't trust it. Well, you're looking at a free operating system with a free desktop, with free, uh, you know, browsers and uh, office packages. Uh, it looks pretty darn good to me. 
Oh, and speaking of which, this uh, free software is what you find running some of the biggest companies in the world. Uh, Linux is what powers Google, by and large, Yahoo, <laughs> the New York Stock Exchange, just to name a few. Mostly because, uh, well, like I said, you know, as a secure platform that is open source, they're able to read into the, all the source. They know that there's no gotchas or surprises in there. They're able to make any changes th that they feel are necessary and uh, you know, lock it down to their heart's content. As you can see, we're already done. So I'll just go ahead and hit restart now. And we should be able to boot up into our new Linux uh, Mint KDE desktop. Okay, so here we are. We're rebooting now. So this will be the first time we've fired up since our uh, operating system was installed. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you've ever installed one of those other guys' OSs, you're probably remembering the experience took hours. Uh, the nice thing is that it doesn't take that long with Linux. Okay, so here we are at our login screen, so we're ready to log in. So I'll just uh, choose the uh, username that I picked at our uh, installation. Type in my password. Whoops, you know what? I think that's the wrong password, isn't it? <laughs> this is the problem with having lots of passwords. Yeah, I, I, I thought so. I, I typed the wrong one. There we go. And welcome to the KDE desktop. Okay, we're greeted by the uh, standard Linux Mint uh, welcome screen, which has information about the system, tutorials, you know, links to uh, sponsors. It's yeah, it's good to sponsor them if you can. Send them a donation. And uh, if you don't want to see this at startup, of course, you can uncheck it. If in the future you realize, oh, shoot, there was some information there that would have been useful, you can always get it back at any time by just typing welcome and then bringing it back up. Now, there are a couple little housekeeping things I like to do. This is just my personal preference is I like to add a couple of things here that uh, are easy for me to use to my panel. So I'll just say, eh, copy here, and you know what? Here, we'll go over here and to our office and grab a couple of things. Eh, nice word processor. Eh, maybe put up the spreadsheet, you know. Yeah, so this would be uh, uh, typical for anybody. Yeah, put, put up a few things that are useful to you. Uh, of course, these little... Uh, red exclamations just indicate that they've never run before, and so the system wants to confirm that this, in fact, is the uh, command line that you want to use. If you're satisfied with the defaults, you can just hit that little play button, and ever after, it'll save it, uh, and that's how it will launch uh, that little shortcut. And so the, the tr same is true of the others. Since this installation is a new one, I mean, we don't uh, always know how much time has passed. Uh, well, I mean, sure, you could go and look at the dates, but... Yeah, from the time that the um, this distribution uh, version was packaged and the time that you download it, uh, some things may have come out. So, as with other operating systems, there's an auto-updater. If you've heard that updating Linux and maintaining the operating system is somehow difficult, well, okay, here's how difficult it is. See the little shield here? This indicates that we have some recommended updates, and there are a few of them. Again, because this is an administrative function, I'm being prompted for my administrator password that I selected, which uh, just happens to be the account that I'm logged into anyways. But even though I'm logged in as the administrator, I'm still prompted for that password every time I perform an administrative function. It's a good security feature. So now it's uh, grabbing the uh, package information to figure out what it is that it needs. And if I want to, I can even look and, and see at the, uh, whoops, uh-oh. Okay, I see some things are available and some things maybe not so. As a matter of fact, here, let me, before it uh, gets around to doing that, let's see, come on. There we go. <clears throat> here it shows the criticality level of the various different updates, where they would be coming from. And let's see, it's been a little while. Ah, there we go. I, I remember it was in here. Software sources. This part is important. Depending on what part of the world you're in, you may want to double check to make sure that the uh, distribution that you've received is connecting to the mirrors with the highest speeds. So here it's pulling all the mirrors around the world and determining what their speed levels are and ranking them accordingly. You know, the one at the top with the biggest bar has the best speed. Fortunately for me, since I'm in the United States, packages.linux.com appears to have the fastest speed and it's my default. 
Now, if I was in one of these other countries, uh, I may end up choosing another mirror. That way you don't sit there all night while your updates are running. Oh, look at this. Here's one that looks a little bit faster. Hmm, they must have a good connection. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I'm intrigued. Well, then just for fun, I'll, I'll try packages from a new location and say apply. As you can see, it's now updated itself to the new location that I chose. And so now it'll go to the location that I've indicated. And so now I'll, I'll, I'll allow my updates to run. As with any uh, new installation, uh, that first time updating brings you up to whatever the, uh, the current is for, you know, all, all the security tweaks and, and other things that have come out for your uh, particular software package. And, and this can normally take a little while. Although it only says a few minutes here, I have a feeling it's actually going to be longer than that as it uh, gets through the different package files. And in fact, here, I'll, I'll let it uh, show it to me as it's going through and, and pulling down the individual items. So some will take longer than others based on their size. Um, figure that this process, depending on your internet connection, can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, uh, especially depending on how old the distribution is that you've selected. Linux Mint in particular lists all the versions of Mint that have ever come out, out all the way back to version 1, since as each version goes forward and changes are made to the default uh, distribution package, Sometimes there are features that people tend to really like, and if uh, they get hooked on something in particular that goes away, um, <laughs> they tend to get unhappy. So you'll find people that will prefer specific additions based on how long they're supported or what features they come with, and, and you have that choice. That's the good thing. I'll go ahead and let my system update, but as soon as it's finished updating, then I'm ready to run with uh, Linux Mint 15, and I have the most updated and secure platform that I can. And every once in a while, if I see that little shield light up with a little exclamation point, I just double click on it and say update. So updating a Linux system is really that easy. Enjoy.